Hello there, my name's Brooke, I'm a geologist and this is day three of the Oxford University first year's field trip to Pembrokeshire, also the last day. <laughs> we're waving at daft students and we're here at West Angle Bay, we're going to look at some really cool Carboniferous rocks that were folded in later deformation events, look at the Carboniferous environments of southern Wales and see how it's changed from the lower and middle Paleozoic and what happened to it during the end of the Caledonian Orogeny and the later Variscan mountain building events. Bit of a grim day, looks like we're gonna get some rain. It'll be fine. Let's go look at some rocks. <laughs> Some really nice crinoid ossicles. That one's quite big. Some of these could be several meters long and, and this wide. Unfortunately, it's already starting to rain. Now we're over here, we can actually see that the rocks are folded over here as well. So there's actually this. Hello, dog. So we can actually see there's this dome shape there in the rocks. Hello. So it goes down there, back up here, over there, and then what's it doing over there? It goes down there. Does it come out over there? Looks like we've got a uh, shale mixed in there as well. A mudstone, is it some thin sandstones mixed in with that crinoidal limestone? And there's all the students off getting ready to go. They've got to map all the structural features, see how many thrust faults they can find. Will they find them all? Will we get rained on again? Probably. The wild demonstrators in their natural habitat, feeding and observing their students. Who knows what goes through their strange heads? Probably something about finding a new friend underneath your pillow. Nature is mysterious and often a bit daft. Here we're looking down on a bedding plane of this lovely Carboniferous limestone and all of these things you can see in front of us are trace fossils that are weathering out of creatures that were digging through the mud 350 million years ago, whenever it was this was deposited. I think it's lower Carboniferous. Absolutely fantastic. And there's some of the students in the middle of their structural mapping exercise. If we look here, we can see some nice way up structures. We've got all these shells lined up here. They curved sides pointing this way so we know that this way was the this is the sediment surface and that's the way up. If you look down there as well we can see all those nice nodules and hummocks. And then there's some cross bedding in those thicker micrite limestone beds. anyone's figured it out yet but right in that flat wall right in front of me is a thrust fault. These surfaces here are called slicken lines and that's where you've had mineralization by fluids running along the thrust fault and then when the pressure drops they crystallize 
and then when the rock slips again it leaves these long slicken lines so you have to you know, figure out that there's something interesting and special about this surface it's pretty cool all this spider web mineralization too this is another sign that we stood on a major fault major, major structural feature I say major, it's not like it's crustal scale or anything, but look at all that spider webbing. It's all calcite veins, that's pretty cool. It has a vein that's been offset by a fault. Also got these strange radial rupture features that me and Joe noticed a few years ago. They're all over the area, concentrated in this band, so I wonder if there's something to do with the thrusting. I'll have to ask structural geology people, see what they think. Oh, it's turning out nice weather now. We've got lots of fossils, so we're actually looking at para parallel to the bedding. Lots of crinoids, rhizomes. Fragments of bivalent from Brachiopod. Bits of coral. But these bits up here, these are interesting because these almost look like microbial mats. So I wonder what was going on around here for this sort of stuff to build up. Some nice cross bedding there. And look at all that shell, all this gravelly texture. The shells. That's really cool. We're out here on the edge of the one of the folds and we can see it's actually turned into a thrust and then thrust back on itself. So if you see the beds folding up over there, that looks like the start of a back thrust. That's pretty cool. See this beautiful folding there on the other side of that back thrust. Absolutely fantastic. Stunningly beautiful. Absolutely incredible. Oh gosh. People wonder why I like rocks so much. What an absolutely beautiful location. I'm very lucky to I get to do this as my job. And look at those incredible rocks. Oh man, look at the folds in them. Full of fossils as well. So exciting. So we've got the back thrust fault there. This big fold here, this big fold here, and there's another fold and thrust over there. But they don't just continue neatly off into shore, they kind of kink and change directions and then dip out. And when, when a, a fold structure like this dips out, it's called the plunge. And they kind of form this ellipsoid structure. And then you've got another set of folds that goes through when you get towards the shore and they're buried under those quaternary sediments, I guess. So it looks like you've got the same fold going onwards, but it pinches out and then another fold with a separate axis takes up, probably because of those thrusting. But I always wonder what it is that stops, that, that stopped this from folding any further and produce that huge back thrust there. It must have been something pretty solid under there. I wonder if it was some of the uh, Ordovician volcanics intrusive, some coarse grain stuff that wouldn't that wouldn't fold. Okay, students are assembling, so let's get back and debrief them, and then head back to Oxford. And you think it's a fun idea to walk up the fold axis, and then you realise it's cool and slippy algae. So these lines we can see here going this way, they're more slick and lines. So these books, books. So these rocks were sliding over each other, like if you folded a book, like a foam book, the layers of stiff rock like this will slide over each other because in between they usually have layers of softer, muddy rock. That's called flexural slip. And that's what these lines are off here, where the mineralization has been scratched, these thickened lines. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Demonstrators are getting desperate. Well, I found some really nice trace fossils. Look at them. Ah, oh, they're so cool. 
Look at his little face. He loves explaining things. <laughs> These things are called tension gashes. It's where the rock was stretched and then it's been filled in by minerals like calcite. Over here we found a really nice orthochore nautiloid. So that's a creature like a squid or like a modern day nautilus, but with a really long straight shell. And this one's been chopped in half and eroded away. The shell was originally made of aragonite, but it's now been replaced by calcite. And those dark bits were chambers that were filled with fluid. And the nautilus, or nautiloid, used the density of that fluid to control its buoyancy in the water. Oh, really cool. So that means as well that this is a f this rock was deposited in a fully marine environment. Because cephalopods like nautiloids and nautiluses and squids only live in the sea. Here's some more nice fossils. This one looks like it could be a bit of an oyster. And here we've got bryozoa, a lacy fenestrate bryozoan. So I'm wondering if there's more oysters on here. We were starting to get a hard ground developing, which means that there were probably significant periods of time between deposition of these different beds. Cool, so some more in exciting environmental information. Oh, so exciting. Enjoying our time out in the sunshine before we have to get back on the bus and go back to Oxford. The organized chaos that is the end of field trip photo. That's the end of the field trip. Hope you've enjoyed coming along and looking at the rocks with us. I've certainly enjoyed talking about the rocks. I always do, I like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> so if you've enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more cool geology videos, and leave any comments below if you want me to talk about particular rocks or locations or anything. Till next time, see you later. Bye-bye. I love you, bro. Say bye-bye, Connell. Bye-bye, Connell. <laughs>